Thanks, Amber. Good morning. Good afternoon, I should say, maybe. How you guys doing? Good. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here and those who are joining by podcast or online. It's good to be together, especially uh, this morning because we're starting a brand new conversation about sensing God. I love that. Did you love that image? Yeah. All right. There's always one, right? There's always, there's always one. Yeah, there's always one. Hey, if you're a guest here, don't freak out. We got security. We're all good. And uh, he's, he's medicated uh, most, of the, most of the time. Uh, most of the time. But um, yeah, this is a, a good, a cool look. Series, yeah. So here's the deal. The, 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 what we're doing is we're actually taking a topic, this idea of uh, how do you hear from God, and we're talking about it for the next couple of weeks. And the reason why I'm calling it Sensing God is I think because we need to, uh, this idea of sensing is this uh, capacity for us to perceive things. And so I think it would be great if the, the next couple of weeks we talked about uh, our capacity to perceive and partner with God to see what he's doing in our lives. Because I don't know about you, but I think all of us, uh, I, I actually I do know this, we all need help in trying to relate to God. Don't you? I mean, anybody need some help trying to relate to God? Or you guys got it down? You're like, I got this. Anybody? No, right? we all need help. The truth is, is my, my relationship with God is like my, my relationship with technology or Apple TV in particular. Okay? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Okay? Sometimes my Apple TV is amazing. Okay? It mostly is amazing. It is amazing. It's awesome. It's, you know, it's great. And then sometimes it's like really spotty. Do you know what I'm talking about? Your favorite show comes on. Okay? And then it stops. You're like, are you serious? What happened? You gotta like unplug it, reset it. What's going on? What's going on? Sometimes it's like super exciting. Sometimes it's like really like, okay, whatever. Sometimes it's like, oh, this is going to be great. And sometimes it, it's, it's like not. Truth is, if you've kind of lived long enough and you kind of know, the, the reality is sometimes our life with God is like super exciting. It's awesome. It's great. Oh, my gosh. And then it's like, what are you doing? What's going on? Why did you let this happen? Have you ever had this thought, like, why did you ha- let this happen? Have you ever had that? Why did you, why did you do this? And what's really interesting is, like, regardless of where you are in your faith, we all sense God. Like, you don't even have to be a follower of Jesus. You don't even have to be a b- person who believes in God, but yet you sense things. What's very interesting is that you find in the scriptures that God uses our five major senses to actually communicate with us. And so I just thought, what if we took some time and just focus on the five senses and see, okay, does God actually uh, communicate with us through our senses? And what's interesting is, is that it's all over the scriptures. And this morning we're going to talk about how God wants to show us something, like he wants our eyes to see so our souls can hear. And, the, and you know that there are things that you're like really passionate about right now that you're thinking about, there are things you worry about, Things that you're concerned about, things that you're um, uh, you're 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 angry about, some things that are like just confusing you, or like just taking over your uh, mental um, um, you know capacity, and you're thinking, okay, uh, I, I really I, I really want God to speak to me. Like, what what are you what are you doing, God? I, I want to propose to you that maybe just maybe. Uh, this morning, God wants to show you something in particular because He knows if your eyes can see what God, what He's doing, your soul will hear. And when your soul hears the words of God, it, there's healing, there's fulfillment, there is peace, there is faith. And so here's what I want to do. I want to pray for us this morning because I know that there are real issues here this morning or maybe even uh, in this room or online. And I believe God wants to say something to you, but it has something uh, to do with him making you see something you've never seen before. So let's pray together and see what God does. Uh, Father, we thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for this conversation because we all want to know you. That's why we're here. That's where we're listening to this podcast. That's where we're gathered together. That's why we, we know that we need to be in a room that maybe uh, you can communicate with us and we can hear you. Uh, God, we know that there are, uh, that, uh, God, I am aware, God, that there are people who are dealing with so many, so many complicated issues and that, that my w- words are going to fall flat. But I do know this, that if there's something they can see um, this morning, it will change everything for them. And so, God, I pray, would you, by the power of your presence, would you allow us to see something? Would you allow us to feel something? Would you allow us to sense something? 
um, that moves us closer to who you, who you are. And God, I thank you for that. God, I know that by your presence, you're here. And we know that you are at work within us and among us. And so I ask you, would you do it? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me show you something that's really fascinating. This is Psalms 19. Here's what it says, okay? Psalms 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Can you say that? The heavens declare the what? The glory of God, okay? And then he goes on, he says, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after night, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. And this, the, the psalmist here is saying that the God puts things in display to actually communicate certain things to us. He goes on, he says, they have no speech, yet they, uh, and they use no words. No sound is heard from them, yet, yet, their what? What? Their voice goes out in all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. And so here the psalmist is saying that God shows us by nature. He shows us in different ways and he communicates to us. And the voice that comes from us actually seeing is powerful. It's powerful and it displays who he is and what he's doing. See, the, the question is not does God show us to allow us to hear. That's true. He does. But the question is do we actually see what he wants to show us? You know, this, Isaiah writes this, and, and this is God speaking to the people of Israel. And if you know anything about um, the scriptures, you, you, you'll realize that as you read it, especially in the Old Testament, even the New Testament, you'll find that Israel, and the, his, God's relationship with Israel is symbolic to our, his relationship to us. And so here, Isaiah is saying something, and I think it's for all of us. And here's what it says. It says this, it says, for I'm about to do something new. This is God speaking. He says, I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Could this scripture be for you in your situation right now? As you struggle with the things that you're kind of thinking through and processing, th does, this, does this hit home for you? He said, can you go back to that? He says, for I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in dry wastelands. Here's, look what he says. He says, I'm going to make a pathway. For some of you, you're looking at your life and you're going, there is no road. And he says, I'm going to create a pathway through the wilderness for you. And here's what I'm doing. I'm creating a river in the wasteland. Like I, I'm creating moments. I'm creating something that will nourish your soul in the, in the midst of your season right now. But here's the big question. The big question is, do you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? He's like, do you see it? And for some of us, we're like, uh, no. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. I, I don't see it at all. I don't see it. See, this is the question, though. I think God is doing something, but we have to have the ability to see. Because it's our capacity to, to see the things that God is doing, to recognize him when he seems to be out of context or he seems to be, in, in, uh, shows up in an unfamiliar way. Can we have the ability to do that? Because the truth of the matter is, is that when it comes to Christianity, sometimes we have this lens, right? We, we walk in our tradition sometimes if you grew up in one or if you find yourself in faith and it's been a couple of years, you go, you know what, this is what I know, this is what I think. And, and then what happens is you begin to have this relationship with God and it's based off of memory or it's based off of tradition. But it's not based off of you like, like you're actively involved in, 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 in communication with God. Some of us, sometimes we just kind of just take on certain things that are just not even real, not even true. And I'm hoping, though, I'm hoping that this conversation about sensing God is a new way to know God. It's a new way to know Him. Because I think we, we, we've taken on the traditions. We take on things as we go lo longer and longer in this, uh, this Christianity. We, 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 we've totally, I mean, you know this. I mean, you, you've seen this. And Christianity as a whole has been re is being redefined. I mean, who is a Christian, right? Let's get the Pope and Donald Trump to talk about it. Like, have you seen that? I mean, who is really a Christian? I mean, okay, do we, what, what, what is going on? What is going on? And I don't know about you, but I, I'm kind of like this lint freak, right? So, uh, like, you know, if you have lint on you, I, it drives me bananas. And I have lint brushes all over. I have one in my pocket right now. No, I don't. No, I don't. But, uh, like, I, I want to, I just, like, I, I know. If, like, if you, if you have a pet, I know you have a pet. 
because it's all over you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so I, I want to clean you, you know? And so I'm serious. I've got two lint brushes in there. I'm always everywhere. It's crazy. But I wonder, though, I wonder, though, could it be possible that we've taken on, like, some tradition, some stuff from Christianity, and you just don't need to start all over again? I really would love for us to start all over again so you can actually see what God is doing. And I'll tell you something. If you can see what God is doing in your life, it changes everything. Changes everything, guys. Everything. So here's how we here's how we do it. First of all, we have to see what God has done. We have see we have to see what God has done for us. You see what God has done for us. There's a uh, there's a statement that Jesus makes. He's he's talking to his disciples. He um, he serves them, which we now call communion. He serves them this um, uh, bread and wine, and he says something which again, guys, it's so powerful. Let me read this to you. He says this. This is my blood. So he takes a cup and he says, hey, this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. Covenant, basically he's saying, this is, I'm changing the game here. I'm, cha- I'm changing the rules. I'm changing everything about your relationship with God. Here's the deal. This cup is my blood and it's poured out as a sacrifice. He's basically saying, I am changing religion as it exists. No longer does humanity have to make sacrifices to attain the divine. I am the sacrifice. This is my blood. I'm opening up heaven for you. So like other religions offer salvation, because they all do. You know that, right? They all offer some kind of salvation, some kind of nirvana, some kind of a better, better place. He's saying, I'm not just offering you salvation. I am salvation. I am salvation. I'm changing the game here, he's saying. I, I need you to understand what, you, what, what I'm doing. And see, you and I in this world, 2016, you have to understand, if you want to see God move in your life and see what he's doing, you have to know, you have to see what he has done. He has changed the game. The religion, like Christianity or religion is, you know, in all religions are, is basically a set of beliefs that people subscribe to, right? That, that's what religion is. He has changed the game right here. Let me define it this way. Christianity is not, or I would say is more than for us to just believe certain things and then have a faith journey. Like, so some of us, you might have grew up in, 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 um, in church, and you kind of had this moment, right? This moment you gave your life to Jesus, okay? And I believe in that. And so we say, hey, I remember that moment. It was an event. And we say, yeah, salvation, it was an event. And then it was a journey. It was a journey of faith. We all understand that. We use that language. But it's more than that. Did you know that? He changed the game. He just switched it on us. He changed the covenant. He, he basically said, I am salvation. What means, which means is that now Christianity is a person and a relationship. He's changed it. So if you don't know this, you're going to have a hard time seeing what God is doing in your life. He's totally changed this. You know what Christianity is now? It is, a, it is a pursuit to be repurposed, repurposed by the person of Jesus. It, it, that's what Christianity is. It's a pursuit to be repurposed by the person of Jesus. All the other stuff is on the side. That's what Christianity is all about. No, 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 no. We do not need anyone else to define what Christianity is or call someone Christian or not. No, no, no. Here's what it is. You have to see what he has done. Because if you don't, guys, we're going to try to keep uh, relating to God with this whole, hold on, let me clean up my act, let me get better, now I can pray. Have you ever done that? You're like, you're, you're gearing up for an ask. You're like, okay, I'm going to stay out of trouble this week. Like, I got I to gotta be nice to my coworkers. Because you know, I'm going to make the big ask. It's, 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 we play the game, but we're not supposed to. We don't need to. We don't need to. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta see what God has done. Then you gotta see what God is doing. You gotta see what God is doing. Have you ever wondered, God, what are you doing in my life? What, what, what do you, what is the meaning of this? Why is it so hard? Why am I waiting? Why, why, why are we suffering through this? Why, what is going on? What is going on? Have you ever like experienced like pain in your life? Anybody, anybody? And you're like, are you serious now? Like, what, why are we going through this? Yeah, you wonder sometimes, like, what are you doing? What are you doing in my life? I want you to re, I want you to, I want to show you something. I think for some of you, you need to write this down, jot this down, 
It's found in the book of Ezekiel. And this is a prophetic thing. Like, it's basically God is uh, using this guy to, to speak prophetically to a nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel is connected to, symbolically, to our relationship with God. And here's what he says. It's really, really profound. And I want you to, you got to know this, okay? This is the lens you have to see things with. Here's what he says. He says, I will give you, I will give you a new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. And I will take you, take out your stony and stubborn heart and give you a tender and responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees. Here, God continually says, I want to give you something. I want to give you what? A new heart. I want to give you a new spirit. I want to take away stony, stubborn heart. I want to give you a tender heart. I want to give you a responsive heart. I want to give you my spirit. I, I want to give you. 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 Here's what God's doing in your life. He's trying to give you things that you don't want to, want to take. You want to earn them. And he's like, no, 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 Stop. Okay. If I don't give you a new heart, there is no way you're going to be able to do this. And you're like, I got this. And he's like, you don't have this. I'm, 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 I'm going to give you, I want to give you something. Let me tell you why it's painful. Because God's trying to mold you. That's why it's painful. God's trying to show you something. That's why it's painful. You're waiting forever because he's, he's trying to do something in you. But it's all good things. It's all gifts. It's all good. I wonder what would our lives look like if we understand what God is really trying to see. If we saw what God is doing, then if we had that lens, man, regardless what happens in our lives, we'd be able to say, you know what, I know I don't understand this, but I know this is good. And I know this will turn into good. What's the third thing? The third is that God, you need to see this. You need to see what God wants you to do. So you got to see what God has done, God's doing, and then what he wants you to do. Do. You are a part of something that's big. You're a part of something that's significant. You, when you came to, a, be, to, to follow Jesus, it's not like, hey, we're going to be in a relationship with God and now it's going to be great and it's going to be fun. Because it's going to be all of those things, but it's no walk in the park. In fact, it's a commission. It's, a, it's like you're, you're joining in and actually becoming a part of something that's bigger than yourself. It's bigger, bigger, bigger than yourself. Now, you don't just matter to God, you matter to the world. To which, uh, again, if we're so consumed with our lives, we're like, ah, I don't know, I'll pass. Just help me. But God's saying, hey, there's so much more. You see, the biggest problem sometimes, and when we can't see God in our lives, is because we don't want to see how we're part of a solution of, for the world. We just want to see the solution for our and here's what God says. This is what God calls us to. He's saying, hey, I want you to do this. Okay, Matthew, he says this. He says, I want you to be the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. He's saying, this is my plan. He's saying, you, I want you to light up. But you know what I mean. Okay, some of you guys are like, light up. Uh, no, no. I want you guys to light, to be the light of the world. Because if when, when people see, when people see your light, they'll glorify me. You're part of a plan, a bigger, bigger plan. Yes, yes, what you're going through is part of a bigger plan. Yes, you matter not just to God, but also you matter to the church. You matter to God's kingdom. God's not just here to just make sure that nothing bad happens to you. God's here to make sure that your life amounts to something greater than you could ever imagine. God's not saying here, it's coming to tell you, hey, 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 you, you, you know, your, your life is, is special. He's, he's trying to also tell you that it's so special that it can't be wasted on you. It's, it's bigger than that. But we have to start with allowing ourselves to go, be open to go, okay, okay I want to I see what God's done. I want to I wanna see what God's doing. I want to see w w what God wants me to do. And then the question is, how does God allow us to do this? How does he work? How, how does this actually work? So here's what I want to I give you. I want to give you two handles that I believe that it will be able to really clarify for you what, what, is, what, is, what, what does it look, look like. So this, the, these two handles are found 
in this story that con is connected to two people. Uh, the first guy is Paul. Paul uh, that I'm referring to is Paul the apostle who, if you know the scriptures, you know he wrote most of the New Testament, but you also know that he was not Paul the apostle before. Okay, He was a guy who was against the movement of Jesus. If you read his story, he was a Pharisee, which means he was a religious leader in the Jewish culture. He was fully against the movement of Jesus. He was a guy who made it his life mission at, at a certain part of his life time to re-eradicate the movement of Jesus. So Jesus tells his disciples, right, I'm going to create this church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. And guess what? Paul decides, I'm going to prevail against it. Like, I'm going to systematically start killing off all the disciples, all the people. I'm going to arrest them. This is not going to happen. And the reason why he did this, because he was so committed to his faith. He was committed to God. He was so committed to Yahweh. He was so committed to God that he would say he would do things in God's name to eradicate all the, the early church people. So here he is. You find him. It's systematically trying to do this, and then God, oh, Jesus, intervenes. He's going towards, uh, he's going to Damascus to do that very thing. God shows up, blinds him, throws him off of his horse, and then begins to speak to him, changes his life. And what I found out is, and what you and I need to understand is that sometimes God, he has to blind us. He has to blind us so we can see. He has to, he has to, I, I, he even allows things, guys, to blindside us. Like, have you ever been, like, blindsided by, like, this, and I'm five, and I'm what? And I'm, uh, I lost my, uh, uh, she, w we, there's an affair, well, what, what? W w w have you ever been to a, at a point where you're, like, you're, you're so covered with, T terror or you're covered with darkness or covered with grief and pain and despair you can't see anything like it kind of blinds you to everything else sometimes God kind of allows that he allows that he because he knows that sometimes blindness actually leads to sight you truly begin to see the things that are so important once you're blinded to the things that are not really that important Paul's blinded for three days, and then God begins to speak to him. This is what Paul, as he's telling everybody about what happened, this is what he says. He says this. He says, Jesus told me to do this. He told me to get up and stand on your feet. He says, I have appeared to you and appointed you as my servant. You are to tell others that what you've seen of me today and that I will show you in the future. You are to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to the light and from the power of Satan to God so that through their faith in me they will have their sins forgiven and receive their place among God's chosen people. Here God repurposes Paul. He says, I'm going to blind you and here's what I want you to see. I want you to see that you're my instrument to reach the Gentiles people who are not Jewish people, you're going to tell them about this, this new covenant, how I've changed the game for everybody, and now we're all God's chosen people, and you're going to do this. I am repurposing your life. I want you, perceive, I want you to perceive this. I want you to partner with me. I'm, re, I am re, I'm recommissioning your life. Your life is not your own. I'm telling you, this is what I want you to see. And, if, and, and, and we kind of know the story because most of the New Testament is stories and letters that Paul has written because of this one moment where he goes, I was blinded so I could see. I think, I think some of us, the reason why you're blinded is because God wants you to see. What is it? I think the hard question is, God, what do you want me to see? Now that everything else is dark, what, what do you want me to see? What do you want me to see? Now the other part of the story is when God says uh, to another guy, he says, I want you to go to, Paul, uh, go to Paul, who's blind, and I want you to go and pray for him. Which is really funny because God blinded him. I mean, you think he could have just kind of opened his eyes, right? 
God didn't use someone to blind Paul, but now he uses a guy to go heal him, which is, come on, why? Because the guy he picked, Ananias, is a great illustration, is a great example of the fact that sometimes God wants to show us things that we're blind to. He's not just a God who blinds us to show us, but he's also a guy who shows us things that we're blind to. So Ananias, right, talks to God. God says, here's this guy. You remember Paul? He goes, yes, I know Paul. Everybody knows Paul, right, because he's the guy you don't want to meet anywhere ever. And he goes, okay, well, I blinded him. I need you to go heal him. Which, again, if that was, you know, me, I'm like, God, you did it. You, I think that's your thing. It's on you, right? But he goes, I want you to go heal him. Because God wanted to show Ananias something. He wanted to show Ananias that Ananias was blind to something. So here's what he does. But Lord, Ananias exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many things, uh, people talk about this terrible thing this man has done to believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. It, it's so funny because sometimes you, do you ever, do you ever feel like you need to explain to God why this doesn't work? Like, <laughs> have you ever done that? Like in prayer, you're like, God, you know, and then you kind of go into it. Do you wonder sometimes what God's thinking? Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> really? Oh. So here he is, like, God, you know, that, and God doesn't you know, fall for it. And he says this. He says, go, go. For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings, as well as to the people of Israel. So Ananias went and found Saul. Saul's name obviously became Paul because of this transformation. I think sometimes God says, hey, 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 I know that, um, uh, um, that you think that from this person nothing of life can come out. Like I know from this situation nothing beautiful can, can be born. I know from this situation that there's no way it's going to work out. Um, but I want you to see something I want you to see that you're actually blind to the things I truly want you to see. That even though you think this is not going to work, I can make it, uh, I'm going to actually use this. You think this guy is an instrument of death? He's going to be an instrument to give life. He's going to, he's not going to, he was used to arrest hundreds of people, but I'm going to use him to set thousands free. I think some of us need to understand that there are things that we're, we're not, we're, we're blind to. We're blind to. And God says, I want you to see this. I want you to see this. I want you to go do this. And you're like, ah, I don't see, I don't see. I want you to just go do this. I want you to go do this. But why don't we? I mean, we all struggle with this, right? I know I do. You know, my, um, this finally made sense to me. Um, um, recently, I, uh, my dad, uh, she, he's 75 years old, and he's a fun guy, I guess. He's, 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 he's crazy. He's, you know, he's kooky in his ways. and It's, it's, it's a crazy relationship we have. But um, So anyways, he was visiting. And uh, for a couple of days, and uh, he was asking me about like, hey, I need you to take me uh, to go get some better reading reading glasses. And he says, just take me to Hair Cedar. I need to get a bigger, like a, a better number or a higher number, and I just have problems reading it. And, and I said, okay, how bad is it? And and he said, well, look at my laptop. And I looked at his laptop, and it was like expanded to the most like you could. You know, I'm like, you see this? Like what? What is going on, Dad? And he's like, I just can't see. I need, I need better glasses. And so we go, we go to Hair Cedar, and he's looking at glasses. I was like, Dad, okay, try this, try that. He's like, oh, what about this, what about this? And I'm like, those are ladies' glasses. Let's go there. You know, and so, and so he keeps trying stuff out, and he goes, no, this is, doesn't work, this doesn't work. And I said, Dad, why don't we just go to the doctors? Like, when's the last time you went to the eye doctor? He goes, well, uh, I don't know, eight, nine years ago? 
I was like, Dad, we need to go to the doctors. He's like, no, 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 I just need, I just need the right number lens and it'll be fine and I can read and fine, you know? So he's nearsighted and farsighted. And so, so I finally convinced him to go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. He's got cataracts in both eyes. And uh, so, you know, the doctor's trying to put the, you know, the right lenses. He's you know, like, no, not clear, not clear, not clear. And the doctor finally is like, hey, listen, you have, you have cataracts. You've got to do surgery. And so I tell my dad that. I translate because he doesn't speak English that well. And my dad's like, oh, no, 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 no. I just need the right lens. I was like. <laughs> so I tell the doctor, I was like, hey, he thinks you don't have the right lens. And uh, he was like, we're laughing, we're smiling about this. And I was like, and I said, dad, you don't need the right lens. It's not the right lens. You have something in your eye. We need to fix it. See, some of us, we're so focused on finding the right lens to make us happy and whole. We really think that if we had the lens of this relationship, life would be, look so much more beautiful. If we had the right lens of success, everything would make sense. If we had the right lens, then, then we would be at peace. If we had the right lens, uh, you, you would experience true life. You and I are looking for the right lens. It's success. It's a relationship. It, it's something that you just think, I just, I can, if this could just work out the way I really want it to, man, life would be awesome. And I think what God is saying is you don't have a lens problem. You, had a, you have a cataracts problem. Like you don't need the right lens. You need... A physician's touch like there's something there I need to actually remove fix I need to heal I need to do some surgery because there is a pain in there that lodged in there that's clouding everything that you see there is abuse in there there is this this stuff that you can't even understand this stuff in there there's failure in there there's disappointment in there there's stuff in there I'll tell you no lens is going to fix it and everything is going to look cloudy and you can spend your whole life looking for a right lens it's not going to do it I want you to see so your soul can hear but it might just start with today, me doing some surgery. If you would be brave enough to go, God, do it. Because I want to see again. Like I want to see what I'm, what I'm afraid to see. I want to see my worth for the very first time. I want to see my sin for the very first time. I want to see my life. I want to see. I want to see. So would we be brave enough to do that? Not like God, speak to me, tell me. No, no, no. God, what is it that you want me to see that I'm not seeing? And I'll, and I'll just do it. I'll just do it. So I want you to pray this bold prayer this morning. God, let me see. I want to see, I want to see something that I'm afraid to see, something that I need to see. Do whatever you got to do, make me see again. So when you, go to the, when you go to the communion, if you go there, see, you change the game. When you go and light a candle, see. That the light of God, the light of hope is in you. It's for you. When you go to the cross, see the sacrifice. You need to, you need to, you need to see. Let me pray for us. Lord God, I just thank you for this morning. God, we want to see again. We want to see what you're doing among us, around us, in us, for us with us. We want to see. 
We want to see so our souls can hear. We want to see something that we're not seeing, something that we're afraid to see, something that we need to see, something we need to focus on. God, some of us, we need help. But in this moment, we're saying, we're believing God. Good God, you're always faithful in our lives. You're always for us in our lives. You're with us, God. And so we want to say, God, we want to say, show us. Show us. God, we love you. We thank you for this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's stand.